First, let's open Quick Decline and start a new project. So I'm going to click on the icon, wait for it to open, wait for it to activate. And then I'm going to hit this Generate New Project button. Let's let's call it, uh, because we're going to be working with Sabine Haynesville Wells, let's call it Sabine Haynesville. Alright, now I'm going to load the project that we just made. And uh, as you can see, there's no wells in this project. So, first thing we need to do is import some wells. I've already got some uh, DI desktop downloads. But you can see you can pull in data from many different sources. So I'm going to browse to my DI desktop download file. And uh, I'm going to hit the import button. And uh, just pull them in. As you can see, we have wells now. So the first thing I like to do uh, once I've started a new project and got all the wells imported, I like to do a quick auto fit of all the wells. So I'm going to go to edit, auto fit all, and I'm going to make sure I like the B factors. I'm just going to hit the run button. So what it's doing right now is it's going through each well and uh, putting a rough curve on each well uh, just so the wells have something uh, that you can work with. So, uh, as you can see, you know, we, we can cycle through the wells, see what the curves are. But the first thing I noticed with this Haynesville example is that my graph uh, axis has too many, too many uh, cycles. So, you can actually change that. You can go to right click. You can also change the colors in the graph, uh, you know, the uh, curve colors, but I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to change the axis. So, let's do something that looks a little bit better. How about that? Okay. Now every time I go to a new well, it's going to be the same access for each one. So this main page is just kind of an informational page. You'll find the EUR of uh, gas, oil, and water. You can see some completion properties and some lateral links. Also you have the uh, actual data and the forecast data in a columnized uh, grid to the right and uh, one thing I want to show you is how this this program behaves very similar to most programs you can just resize to fit um, fit your window and make things bigger uh, this grid over here acts like a, a lot like Excel you can highlight things and you get nice summations averages counts you can highlight multiple columns you could pay you could paste data into this and save it to the well uh, you could copy and paste the whole thing to Excel uh, it's very Excel like so it's very useful um, you can change the curve on this first page uh, in the B factor although it's not recommended um, most of the curve adjustments is going to happen in the fit decline page other things that this first page can do, you can create a new well, uh, you could edit well, or, or you could just look at the information for this well. A lot of times I'll just leave this window open on another screen on my computer and cycle through the wells and uh, it's pretty useful. Uh, you could delete a single well or a single case. Um, but next let's go into the uh, fit decline page this is where you can fit the different curves so oil water gas you could zoom in if you need to but right now I'm going to click on gas I'm going to show you how this works this first dot allows you to move the curve around the last dot allows you to change the decline of the curve the middle dot changes the B factor so the curviness of the curve if you want it to more curvy um, I usually don't use that. I usually just type in the, the B factor and, and adjust the curve uh, how I want it. So whenever you get the curve the way you like it, you can hit the save button. The other thing I want to show you uh, that is related to the fit decline is the flow regime page. This page allows you to see if your well has gotten in and out of linear flow. So going up, we get into linear flow which is this flat line, this flat blue line and then we see it comes out of linear flow so we know it's in pseudo steady state 
and we know we can go ahead and put a decline curve on the well. So then you come over to the Fekovic plot and drag the curve around until it matches one of these lines. This dark line is a B factor of 1.0, so if I count backwards, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, this well is about a 0.8 B factor. So when we come back here, we can see that we did use a 0.8, so the curve looks pretty good. So I'm going to save the curve. Now I'm going to go to the economics. Assuming all these eco params are correct, I can hit the run button. And we have economic output. And here we have all of our yardsticks, our MPV table, our reserves. And of course, we have the massive grid that has all of the detailed output, capital, prices, well count, everything. Uh, and right now, you can see that we've told it, give me 20 years of yearly data. I could have said, give me 50 years of monthly data. Hit the run button. And now you can see we have monthly data. Again, when you highlight things, you get nice summations, averages, counts. You can copy and paste, copy the whole thing, paste it in Excel. Uh, you can also say, you know, give me 50 years of daily data. If you wanted to know what the, the, the daily looks like. Um, let's go, let's go put it back at uh, yearly data. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the economics because it, it needs several videos to explain everything. But you do have price tables, you've got capital tables, you've got tax tables, uh, and interest models and tables. Uh, basically, you can model anything you need to. And you have auto effective dates or you can assign your own. Um, so it's a full feature deal. There, it, there are a few things um, that help you with your economics. There's the batch run, where you can run them all together to one effective date. And you could output to Excel, Word doc, PDF, Tableau. You can output as many years and as many intervals. So you could say 100 years of daily data. Anything you want, it's all there. The auto run feature allows you to quickly assign economic values to all the wells uh, so that you could then go into batch run and do a, a combined run. Um, and again, all this data goes to the file itself, which is a SQLite file, so you can see the raw data by opening SQLite Studio or any other business intelligence software. The next piece of this program is the map. It's very helpful. It allows you to see where your wells are aerially, and you could zoom in and see their well names. Uh, if you click on a single well, it will actually pull that well up. If you click on multiple wells, you can do things like normalized type curves or an aggregate, which is all the wells summed up. But right now, let's just do a let's do a uh, BOE high line normalized type curve just to show you what that looks like. We're going to give it a name. I'm going to say Sabine type curve. Create. Alright, so this is what the type curve looks like. I'm going to hit the auto fit button on it. And I'm going to hit save. So you can see the type curve is 4.5 BCF basically. The other things the map can do uh, it can, it's a full GIS capable map, so you can add WMS servers, you could add shape files. So real quick, let me show you how that works. I'm going to add some servers real quick. If you go to quickdecline.com slash utilities, you'll see that I have a couple preferred WMS servers already listed. Let's take a look at how this works. Oh, sorry. So there's one. There's two. And now that we have those servers, let's go ahead and turn some layers on. So I want to turn on lakes, rivers, 
Let's go turn on uh, major roads, cities, runways, urban areas. So the WMS server we're using right now is uh, the NOAA government server, the one that has weather and things like that. So you can, you know, come in here and turn on uh, things like what is the wind looking like today. So I can turn on the 12-hour forecast of wind so I can see, you know, operationally am I going to have issues today doing a workover on my wells. Um, and of course the speed is going to be uh, subject to how fast the government servers are running today but you can see that there's no wind issues in this area so my workover should be pretty pretty uh, smooth today let's go ahead and turn off the wind the next thing I want to do is go to my other WMS server which is the National Atlas and I want to turn on things like wilderness preserve areas, Indian reservation, federal lands. Uh, so I can see that there's not a whole lot of federal issues in this area, but if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that there's quite a bit of wilderness preserve. Uh, if I go over to West Texas, you'll see um, the uh, federal lands. The next thing I want to show you is how the shape files work. So I'm just going to go to the map, add shape files, and I've made a, a goofy little shape file just for uh, informational purposes. Um, I made it using QGIS, which is a free program you can download online. It's very good. And I want to make it yellow and I want to give it an opacity of 50% so we can see through it. So I'm going to add it. You can see it added fine. And then I'm going to say OK. And there's our shapefile. So you could imagine if you had a shapefile from a data room or if your company had its own shapefile, they load just like that. And uh, whenever you have a bunch of shapefiles, you can order them in the correct order so they overlap appropriately. Uh, same thing with the uh, WMS servers. Um, they also have the ability to order each layer separately. So you can see I've got these uh, selected as such, but I can move this one down, can move this one up. So if you have any conflicts, uh, they can overlap each other the way that you want them to. And then finally, you could say, I always want my shape file to be over my WMS server or vice versa by moving those up and down. So a, there's a lot of control right now and we intend on adding many new features to the GIS capable map. So that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, if you want to get into the many other features we have and get into the weeds of, of different things like hooking up to databases, opening with SQL Server, or doing anything else that's a little bit more um, crazy you can get into the other videos where we go into detail about some of these things please check out my other videos and thank you for your time